Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Calm Before the Storm, in which we're playing as the good old Soviet Union, in which uh, we need to talk about the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Now, if you want to skip ahead in the video about by two minutes, just because I'm going to read the entire thing here. The USSR, under the leadership of General Secretary Yosef Stalin, is the greatest country in the world. Or that is what the papers say. The truth is that the USSR is a rather in dire straits. After that maneuvering its political opponents, Stalin finally assumed the position of General Secretary in 1929, a question and his authority has only been growing. Though he only formally became General Secretary four years ago, he has been ex exercising increasing amounts of control since Vladimir Lenin's death. A close associate of Lenin, Stalin formally calls his ideology of Marxism-Leninism. <clears throat> Which the ruling Communist Party claims to be the only true successor of Lenin's thought. Though, through, though Stalin has continued the autocratic system established by Lenin, he has slowly increased its intensity. A personality cult has formed around both leaders, and Stalin makes even greater use of concentration camps through Stalin's own views of economic, social policy, and religion prevailed over Lenin's. The USSR was established after the Russian Civil War, fought between radical leftist reds, anti-leftist whites, and a variety of nationalist movements from 1917 in November to October 1922. Though the Reds would eventually win out, this came at a great cost. Due to the Soviet ag agricultural policies and terror against the population from nearly all sides, the economy has been destroyed and a famine struck in 1921, lasting until 1923. By the end of it all, about 10 million people had died. Over the course of these five years, the USSR had gone from a limited party socialist democracy to a one party autocracy ruled by Lenin's Bolsheviks. The status has heads of state and government, though these are anomaly ceremonial roles as the General Secretary of the All Union Communist Party of the Bolsheviks holds power. The General Secretary is supplemented by an executive committee called the Politburo, which is elected by a Central Committee, different from the Central Executive Committee, which serves as a le legislative house, <clears throat> which in turn is elected by the party congresses. These committees oversee a massive bureaucracy that manages practically all aspects of life from massive projects such as economic development and the propaganda machine, all the way down to the heirs of communal apartments and the elementary school classes. Tell me more. <clears throat> Lenin and Leninism. The Russian Civil War resulted in the transformation of a socialist democracy into a one-party autocracy. The state is governed by a bureaucracy built to supplement the policies of the Politburo and the Central Committee, which in turn supplement the General Secretary. Elections are held where the sole candidate for the given position is chosen by the bureaucracy and from the bureaucracy. A key element of Bolshevik ideology is ideological discipline, called democratic centralism. Democratic centralism is a doctrine that states that the party decisions are totally binding on the entire party, with the intention to eliminate factionalism. Combined with the actions of the secret police at the, this time the NKVD, democratic centralism prevents opposition to the dictatorship from within the bureaucracy, even though some early factions argued against it. Before discussing Stalinism, Marxism-Leninism, Marxism, Leninism itself must be explained. Then envision an elitist form of Marxism. While many Western European communists have advocated for a more decentralized and democratic state, Lenin argued that Russia did not have the right level of development for such an arrangement. Thus, Lenin argued for a vanguard party that would work to build up political consciousness and direct the proletarian revolution by eliminating perceived economic and political enemies. This was his interpretation of Marx's dictatorship of the proletariat during the Civil War. The Bolsheviks had begun the Red Terror aimed at violently eliminating alleged ideological opponents through mass killings and imprisonment in concentration camps, carried out by the Extraordinary Commission, Cheka. At first, Soviet Russia nationalized all economic activity in order to mobilize the population to fight the Civil War. Called War Communism, this mobilization had disastrous effects on the economy, particularly the policy of food apportionment, where crops were forcibly confiscated from the peasants, extending an imperial practice. As this had contributed to the aforementioned famine, war communism was entirely reversed in 1922, when the new economic policy took over, allowing individuals to engage in private enterprise in order to build industry. This was abandoned in 1928. Stalin and Stalinism. Though claiming to be a formalized extension of Lenin's ideas, Marxism-Leninism is in fact the imposition of Stalin's positions on Leninism, which Stalin already had influence on, Lenin on before Lenin's death. It can be safely called Stalinism. Due to Stalin's successful assumption of autocratic power, Marxism-Leninism is a state ideology. We've engaged in internal class war for many years in the USSR. The term class does not just refer to the different echelons of wealth, but different occupations. The workers, poor peasants, middle peasants, kulaks, intellectuals, technical specialists, bureaucrats, etc. are all considered to be different classes. Stalin has rejected the smichka, or the collaboration between the peasant and the worker class in favor of an all-all class conflict. National laws discriminate against and encourage universal ostracization of those declared to be class enemies and their families, which can be understood as anyone who's not a worker to collect a farmer or bureaucrat. This war has also been extended to the clergy. Though religion is not technically illegal, the city is engaged in a campaign to eliminate the religious belief, except for the Stalin cult. Religious ministers and land used for such purposes are heavily taxed, and the servers of cults are openly denied privileges, such as permission to live in cities. In reality, priests and other clergy members have been arrested en masse, and many religious buildings, such as churches, have been destroyed. The party's socially conservative policies have also supplanted any progress Lenin made. Though Lenin's government improved the rights of women and discouraged ethnic bigotry, Stalin has instead slowly encroached on gender equality, and those close to Stalin know he harbors resentments towards some ethnicities, primarily Jews. There's so much here. Also, I'm reading this just because 
<clears throat> I'm never going to read it again. But Soviet economics in 1928, the new economic policy was reversed in favor of total nationalization and state planning, and the form of five-year plans. These were meant to forcibly industrialize a mostly rural country. Though the Soviet press reports huge successes, these are generally exaggerated as the first five-year plan was totally not completed, and any real success has been put on the backs of prison labor with immense loss of life. The five-year plans are also poorly managed as the production quotas have turned out to be grossly over-demanding. Collectivization has proved to be the most damaging in policy of all. The party has been trying to integrate privately owned land into collective farms, which would be owned by the, those working on it, and state farms, which would be state-owned. Despite these official definitions, both collective and state-run farms are run by the state bureaucracy, with no meaningful difference. Collectivization has been opposed during using forceful methods such as shock brigades meant to get the peasants to join the collective farms by any means. Concurrent with this policy is decolocalization. Kulak is a derogatory term driven to so-called wealthy peasants which in reality means anyone who is not starving. These peasants by Stalin's decree are the best supported to the East, and were shot by the NKVD. This policy alone has caused hundreds of thousands of deaths at least. Collectivization, though ideologically correct according to the state, has so far not benefited anybody. It is meant to benefit landless peasants, but there are not there are really few, very few, landless peasants, and the peasants have grown quite opposed to this social transformation. Many peasants stated, protesting peacefully, though this turned violent when the situation failed to improve. People are committing sabotage and even resorting to murder. Despite these failures, the Soviet government continues to push on, the result of which has been a major famine stretching from Ukraine all the way to Kazakhstan. Solidist repressions has uh, ensured that a large sector of the population has become opposed to the Bolshevik party, and a crime wave has hit the nation. Although Stalin's authority is nearly absolute, incidents such as the 1932 Ryutin affair show there's still opposition to this rule at the highest levels, and he's getting a little worried. At least a little bit worried. I understand. My apologies for taking so long with that, but the second five-year plan. After the moderate success of the first five-year plan, we should follow it up with a second plan to eliminate capitalist elements, expand industry, improve the well-being of the people, and strengthen the defense of the country. Followed up with, uh, Oral Mash Zavod? Um. This is the issue of a collectivization. Collectivization is a policy of taking grain and land from the so-called kulaks, well off peasants, and redistributing them to landless peasants. In truth, they're little, la little landless peasants, and yet the kulaks have been treated harshly still. While Comrade Stalin writes of our successes, we are well aware it has cost millions of lives. The crisis of the proletarian dictatorship, in addition to our economic crisis, our issues. The recent political scandals threatened the very foundations of our state. In June 1932, old Bolshevik and Bukharin supporter Marty Yaman Ryutin published a platform called Stalin in the Crisis of the Proletarian Dictatorship, in which Ryutin called for peace with the peasants and the forceful end of Stalin's dictatorship, even went as far as to call for Trotsky's reinstatement in the Communist Party. Ryutin's faction, the Union of Marxist Leninists, operated in secret for nearly three months, but was betrayed by an informer, the Presidium of the Central Control Commission, and Politburo authorized the destruction of Ryutin's conspirators and allowed Comrade Stalin to remove the traitor from the party, Grigory Zinoviev and Lev Kamina, both old associates of Lenin, have been found to have read the platform and were expelled from the month after. These provoc provocateurs were then exiled to the Urals. This incident demonstrated two things. First, to show the comrade Lenin was wise to include democratic centralism as part of our power structure, so we have a legal means to deal with the traitors like Ryutin. Second, if comrade Solon's precarious it shows Stalin's Sol precarious position. It's very clear. If we really can secretly engage in factionalism, who knows how many others are also engaged in such conspiracies? We must find these spies. And, okay, so I didn't tell you this yet, but we're actually on historical for this campaign for the Soviet Union, but I did max buff Germany. So they have the literal max buffs um, in, from, like, the game rule options. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see how well we do. Um, as long as they run a manpower, we'll be fine. So, uh, what do you want to do here? Civvies? Get a civvy. Arashmash Vazad. The Ural Heavy Machinery Plant um, is our planned source of metallurgical and infrastructure equipment. But in Sverdlovsk, it'll help to industrialize the backward Siberia. Cool. But yeah, we're on historical. Just because when I did, last time we played historical in this mod, uh, Jimmy died really quickly, so... Yeah, that's why I max buffed them out. The collectivization debate. Like we no doubt in the political bureau, the collectivization was very successful, especially because Comrade Stalin would not let, any the, let there be any doubt. However, our temporary moratorium has only resulted in about 5% of farmlands becoming collective farms in the last year. The debate is thus. Should we re-intensify collectivization efforts, or should we declare an end to the program and let the country recover? Continue. Which is, I think, the more historical route, so. Which is going to hurt us pretty badly, but whatever. Restore Kulak rights? Ha! Continue con collectivization. Oh, boy. Uh, before we do that, though, we have the crime wave, which sucks. We have ethnic nationalism, which sucks. We have memory collectivization, which is not very good for us. We have dissocial dissatisfaction, which is pretty bad for us, too. And political commissars, which is, eh, that could be worse. Let's continue collectivization. Although the cost will be high and the resistance will be great, Carmen Stalin has decided to continue collectivizing the nation, which is better for consumer goods, but everything else kind of sucks. The Enabling Act. Oh, we love the Enabling Act in Germany. We absolutely love it. But yeah, as you can tell, I've already set up pretty much everything here. Um, oh, we have some ships, huh? Oh, subs. Oh, how great.
Well, we might as well work on a lot, getting a lot of naval XP right now, as well as building up an air force. So we do have some air XP as well. And oh, you're all done. Oh wow, we're all done already. Good job, guys. Well, maybe not. So you guys are done. Um, tactical bombers. Let's do boom, boom, boom. It's fine. And oh, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and deal with resistance. I would like some more stability. Peasant resistance is still high in our nation. We need to deal with them in every way possible. I absolutely. So we are out of a lot of equipment. Our industry is not big. We have only 79 factories. And I might try to get motorcycles in this campaign. I've never used motorcycles. I don't see how well or bad they are. So I think that'd be fun. Oh, wait, what's this? Second five-year plan. If we manage to meet the quotas for the second five-year plan, then we'll be rewarded with a stronger industry. If we don't, we could face industrial failures, and those who are responsible will be arrested. Oh, crap. <clears throat> That's not bad. Uh, what is this? Ish moratorium. Oh, finish the White Sea Canal. What is this? A canal from the White Sea to the Baltic is one of our grand construction projects, and we should be able to finish it this year. Built with forced labor, it's said that the left bank was built by those who told political jokes, and the right bank by those who listened. Cool. Um, Chaco War. Maybe I should have done the second five-year plan yet. No, we, we have to do it eventually, so. Invest in agricultural technologies. Well, since we're almost done, we should get this one done next. Invest in agricultural technologies. New technologies such as tractors and com combine harvesters might help to alleviate the effects of the famines. Maybe. As my voice is starting to crack. <clears throat> but yeah, Germany is going to get a lot of buffs. Or a lot of, like, a lot more political power. A lot less supply consumption. Stuff like that. It's going to be probably a little more difficult than I think it's actually going to be, so. We'll see what happens. And you know what? Screw it. We're going to go historical. We're going to go mass assault, which is not going to be great for us, but you know what? Oh my god, 400, oh my, wow, wow, okay, I should have realized that land doctrine is going to be really bad for us, researching period is not going to be great for us, so, uh, we're going to keep that on, but, oh my goodness, holy crap, that is not ideal, yeah, I'll do this one first, and then we'll just, we're going to race down this way, as much as fast as possible. Uh, let's see another city, Chelyabinsk, Traktorny, Vazov, Zavad. The Chelyabinsk tractor plant will build agriculture machinery for us to send to collective farms. Designed by American capitalist Albert Kahn, this plant will produce Stalinette's brand tractors. Cool. As, as you can tell, we're building a lot more cities, so. Um, do we need any more resources? Uh, can you use a spot of rubber? Why not? Um, is there anyone there we could trade with that's not a capitalist? I guess we uh, uh, They're all capitalists. We'll go with Siam. Some of the oppressed people of the world. Yeah, how do that one? Let's just go here. That'd be good. More cities are nice. All right, so for this one, we've got a lot to go down, which kind of sucks, which is fine, but still. <clears throat> 33, 33, anything for 33? No, no, no. Marines, maybe. Plane wise, oh my goodness. We could get some carrier fighters there, but we don't really need to spend time on that right now. Uh, fuel would be not bad. Ah, it's just speed. Yes, please. Cool. Basically, I think we just need to get through everything. Uh, steel would be nice. I don't really need more steel currently, though. Another factory wouldn't be bad. Another city wouldn't be bad. Get a lot of infrastructure. <clears throat> well, let's get the Ural Vagon Zavod. Your old carriage works will be another addition to the industrial complex of Svedlusk, which will, and it will be the site of armored equipment production. Nice. And we're going to get 0.36 political power every single day. God dang it. The White Sea Canal has to be finished, of course, too, so. Yeah. We basically got to go through everything here. Right, which is fine. It's totally fine, but. It's going to take so long to get to the second five year plan. Oh, maybe I should have waited to do it. That's alright. Uh, the mods we're using also include Pedal Peace Conferences and as well as Station Tool Mod, just in case. Just in case we need them, you know. Just in case. Oh, we got a whole civvy! Yay! Uh, I do that one first, just because it's closer to finishing up. Alright, so who can we choose from ministers? Ooh, 39% is not good enough. Nobody. Oh, everyone's already chosen. Jan Berzin. Stalinist. We lose political power. Ooh, disorganized operations. That sucks. Genrik Yagoda. I'd like to get Genrik Yagoda. Mr. Hitler Stash. Before Hitler Stash was cool. Litvinov. Maxim. Stalin, of course. Oh, huh. well, alright. Probably a few more subs already. Yeah. It's alright though. So 
So after this one, let's go do this one just because I want to get that civilian factory. But the Bonal textile plant will be part of an attempt to industrialize Central Siberia, located, as the name suggests, in Bonal, the plant will make textiles primarily out of cotton. However, with the same rampant poverty in our nation, it is doubtful that many people will receive the fruits of others' labor. Which is fine, you know, things happen. 1515 is very nice. Kharkov, very good. And a few days left. Actually, we're doing well on anti air. Armored cars, motorcycles are nice. We do need some motorized. Oh, now we're getting some motorized. We need, need more tanks too. Ooh. But steel isn't really an issue, so. Another civvy? You know what? Just max out the civvies. The infrastructure is nice and all. And I, I love getting improving our infrastructure, but we can definitely wait. Ship stuff. Uh, that's. No, wait, what? 2.2 year ahead of time. Uh, okay, whatever. Yeah, let's get to another city. The Tashkentsky Melansi Kombanat. The Tashkent textile mill will be part of a project to Sovietize Central Asia. Located in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Let us hope that employment will help bring the locals around to our cause. Well, you'd hope so, but you never know. As we do have a cup of coffee and we're like, yum yum. Yeah, are we done training here? <clears throat> well, because we're going to go like 40 combo with anyways, these good divisions aren't too bad. They're not great, but they're really not too bad, actually. Um, let's see... Mountaineers, not terrible. Motorized divisions are, eh. Cavalry divisions are even worse. Actually, you know what? Mm -hmm. There you go. Actually, there's more suppression. You guys with... And, of course, you do have this already. So, each one of these individually has 2.4. Each of these guys has 2. Actually, you're better for suppression. Yeah, actually, we need you for suppression. Huh. I always use cavalry, but you know what? Screw it. And... Thank you. Center, right, wins, suspension elections. Oh, boy. Uh, how do we have here already? Eight. D. There you go. Thank you. And thank you. Very nice. And the Krem Torsky Zavad Tyazalogo Stankostroynia. I, as you can tell, I speak a lot of Russian every day. Every day I speak Russian. Issue passports. Some important bureaucrats will need passports to travel abroad for state purposes. We should give them these passports. I like to build the metro, though. Ooh. Shadow evacuation. We lose political power. Applicants to come to property approval again. Huh. Well, since this is here, we'll want to do that anyways, right? The Kramtorsk heavy machine tool plant will be a major producer of heavy industrial machinery in the Ukraine. Look in the Donbass region, ZZ, KZTS. Should provide the state with the ability to create far more factories. Let's hope so. We'd like to become an industrial juggernaut, if possible. Yep, we're still getting there. We're going to try to beeline through this as fast as possible. Now, once we're done with this, and once once is over, we can do the 17th Congress of the VKPB. Um... The Congress begins, in which we'll, we we won't go the Great Retreat. I know some people at the time of recording this want me to go down and do an anti-communist, not communist route, but we will go uh, down this way. Actually, what does this do? Huh? Oh, let's grab this one first. Uh, reorganize districts, streamline bureaucracy. It's not bad. Party trans. Hello. Okay. Pass the sonar. All right. It is 34. So happy 34, everybody. Uh, not quite that one. Give more output. That'd be nice. And that's still ahead of time. Fuel wise, anything over here yet? 34, 34, no. Let's we'll get more fuel capacity because right now we're maxed out on, on 289,000, which is not bad. Could be better, but we'll do the 17th Congress of the Workers next. We're bound to hold the 17th Congress of the All Union Communist Party, Bolsheviks, to firmly ratify the second five year plan and adopt the new party platforms laid out by Comrade Stalin. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. Not bad. Just here to consumer goods a little bit, but... Oh. Yeah, keep building them civvies. Uh, 50% is not bad. Obviously, 60% would be better, but I want to build more dockyards there eventually. So, we'll save that area for later. Oh, 70's right there. Oh. Oops. Oh, well. What's done is done. Can't change it now. But the Congress, and then maybe we'll go back and do some of this other stuff, too. Or maybe roads. We'll see. Because we need to do this first for the Congress. And Dubrovskaya Tets. Dubrovskaya will be a new coal based power plant on Leningrad's region, meaning meant to assist with electrification. Remember Lenin's teachings communism is Soviet power plus electrification of the country. 
The 17th Congress begins. The 17th Congress of the All Union Communist Party Bolsheviks begins today to determine the future of the country and the platform of the party. In attendance are nearly 2,000 delegates representing nearly 2 million party members. The agenda includes a report by the Central Committee, represented by Comrade Stalin, a report by the Central, Committee, Central Revision Committee, represented by Comrade Vladimirsky, a report by the Central Control Committee, or Commission, represented by Comrade Zudzutak, uh, a report by a delegation to the Comintern, represented by Comrade Manuliski, a formal pro approval of the second five year plan and revisions to the party organization platform. Let us begin! Oh, maybe I should have done some of this uh, military stuff too. This red yeah, I probably should have done the Red Army. My bad. Traditional strategies. Add trench warfare. Savka. I kind of know which way we're going to go already. Next time we play is the Soviets. Or Russians, maybe. That's not bad, actually. Huh. Soviet Navy, Air Forces. Oh, we should have done the Soviet Telepath. Eh. Actually, is there any prerequisite for not to fire? No. Cool. That's fine. If you're fighting, not bad. Uh, synthetic rubber's a way bit ahead of time. 34. I'll get some of that stuff. We're going to need it. We're really going to need it. Uh, so ship stuff is all outdated. So, I guess we'll do oh, the 17th Party Congress Party Platform. <laughs> Over the past few few days, Comrade Solon Vladimirsky, Rudzutak, and Malutsky, Manulovsky, gave the reports. According to them, everything is going well, except when it's not going well. However, neither a brave communist party nor its leaders are the cause of our non-existent setbacks. But the saboteurs and Pios and bourgeoisie, the TSRK and the Comintern's activities were approved wholeheartedly. A particular note with revisions to the party platform laid out by the Comrade Stalin, which was swiftly approved. The platform of Comrade Stalin is the party, platform of the party. Comrade Stalin's right to keep us internationalist. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll go with that one, I guess. I, I don't know. Like, I'm sorry that I don't know exactly which one's the more historical one. Uh, I just wanted Stalin and play Stalin this, for this campaign. But the Bobrikov State District Power Plant is another key component of our electrification campaign. Look at Intula. It'll provide new chemical factories with the power needed to supply the state with fertilizers and ceramics. And the party organization. The last few days have been seen debated about the organization of the party itself. Resolutions were adopted to cut down on bureaucratic inefficiency and establish a more hierarchical organization. That's the cause for the end of cadres and the transformation of the party organizations and committees. It also sees more organizations created to give more control to the central committee. Let's give more power to the Comrade Stalin. Good work, comrades. Good work. Yes, exactly what we wanted. Exactly our intentions, my friends. Moratorium on new members? Social alien elements, such as reactionaries, have been li have likely infiltrated our party. Any of our three and a half million members could secretly be a foreign spy or reactionary. We need a moratorium on recruitment to allow further scrutiny of current members. Cool. So, uh, the second five-year plan. Although the second five-year plan has already started, it's not been formally approved by the Congress. The Congress has thus spent the last few days approving the plan, along with its main goals. The elimination of capitalist elements and technological modernization of industry, continued agricultural improvements, and electrification. Final words and elections. As the Congress comes to a close... Comrade Stalin gives a final speech in it. He talks about the eternal threat of imperialism and sabotage, and the need for ever increasing vigilance. Elections to the Central Committee also occurred, wh whose new composition includes up and comers like Nikita Khrushchev and Nikolai Yezov. Long live the revolution! Oh, wait, what? Great retreat. Wait, he chose to perform a great retreat. Oh. Uh. Oh. Well, maybe I made a mistake. Dr. Reza, did he escalate social tensions at the country by returning? By any class conflict. Um, well, I think I made a mistake there, so my bad. And then, uh, yeah, this one we're going to do off, probably off screen as well. Oh boy. And here we have it, my friends the Kemerovskaya Gress, in which, as part of our Serbian industrialization camp or campaign, the Kemerovo State District Power Plant will provide electricity to the villages and factories of stationed in the area and continue the communist offensive. Our attacks on reactionary institutions, such as the Burzui, and scientific progress must continue. <clears throat> because they must. Uh, the collective spirit is not bad. We could do ooh, ooh reestablish party maximum. I might do that first because we could really use a little more political power. Reestablish the party maximum. Bolsheviks and workers must have a cap on wages in order to follow socialist ideals. Now I don't know which one was more historical with the friendships or friendship of peoples versus continue uh, the colonizatia, which I heard was actually really campaigned to kind of like de not really necessarily de russify but like lessen russification a little bit. I think. I could be completely wrong about that. I don't know why Russian history that well. But I think that was the goal. I could be very wrong. Incredibly wrong. So, so, so incredibly wrong about all that stuff. But <clears throat> it is what it is. But yeah, it, correct me about my history. Because I don't know which one is which. Apparently this was never repealed. The Kornizatsiya. 
But it was basically it was more re rustification of uh, things going on um, eventually, like during the late 30s. So, uh, Moscow Metro. Mm, it's not bad. We're doing really well on this, actually. If a shadow evacuation, if we're to face another major invasion, our western frontier will be threatened. To protect our industrial capacity, some of it should be moved to the east, and we should plan to move it more, move more in the future. Let's do this one since we're already at 70. There have been plans to build a metro system under Moscow since Imperial times. It's finally time to build a subway. And Ninsia Sverdskaya, guess. Lower Sverdskaya hydroelectric station will be another method of providing the London region. Or Leningrad region with electricity. If successful, it'll be a modern model for the uh, for other hydroelectric plants to follow. Oh my gosh, 405 days. I want to get it done now, just because you never know. And there's not a whole bunch that we can research. There's some stuff we can, but I want to get it done now, because even though the land doctrine is not very good for us, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, we're gonna be losing so many bodies, so many millions of men probably. But it's okay. You know, things happen. That's what we're here for. 15, 15, 11, not bad. It's already middle of 34, so I want to do the second purge. I just want to get the second uh, five-year plan, though. That's my main goal. Paul von Hindberg dies. Goodbye. I literally don't remember which one this one is. The All-Union People's Contract. Redirect nationalism. Formalize familial laws. Communal housing. Expand the fabric. Continue the war on religion. Let's do Rion Sky GES. Look at the river Rion in Georgia. The Rion hydroelectric station will help to supply Georgia electricity, unfortunately. It will not solve the problem of Georgian nationalism, unfortunately. But, hey, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Hey, 93 factories, not bad. Not too shabby. So we get better planes now. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 35 is a little bit ahead of time, so we're not going to do that just yet. But it's in the works. It's in the works, my friends. Uh, anything there, anything there, anything there, anything there? No. Alright, anything here? No. Um, 36. Oh, yes. Better artillery would be good to get. We need 80,000 guns. Tons of artillery. Tons of light tanks. Motorcycles are actually looking okay. We could probably lower it by one. We do, are making some anti war bombers, motorcycles, anti tank, anti air, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I'd rather flesh out support equipment and artillery for now. Just because guns are pretty cheap to produce, so. Oh, hello. There you go. Just in case you need it. And the collective of spirit is not bad. Leninism, reorganize the districts. Uh, political power is not bad. Daily political power gain. Party fuel office. Yeah, nothing that we have, just have to do this. I've already streamlined the bureaucracy in order for this focus to have an effect. Streamline the bureaucracy, huh? Okay. Uh, the Srednyuralsky Aggress. The help supplier factories in Svedlosk. We'll create the Srednyuralsk State District Power Plant. That'll be part of the Ural electrification plan. It'll help us to link up eastern provinces with Moscow. 0.44 is definitely better than 0.36, but it's still not very good. Socialist uprising in Spain. Oh, yay! We applaud the socialist uprising in Spain. Yes. And then Karab defies orders. A comrade's on. Has recently ordered the NKVD to <clears throat> replace the head of the Leningrad office, Philip Medved, also a known associate of Kirov's, with Grigory Yavdokimov. It was closer to Comrade Stalin, however, an unthinkable display of individuality. Comrade Kirov countermanded the order. Although furious, uh, Comrade Stalin has become to see this otherwise minor event as a possible excuse to launch a purge against his perceived political enemies and consolidate his power for good. Therefore, Comrade Kirov must die. Oh. Comrade uh, Zaporozets will lead the operation. Oh. Nice. As you can tell, we're completely ignoring the whole thing between us and uh, Italy, but. Leonid Nikolayev, a failed Communist Party member who holds intense grudges against the party, was picked up and hired to kill Kirov. He tried to kill Kirov in his office in the Smolny, but was found out by the security guards. Upon the intervention of the NKVD, he was left with all of his personal effects in his pistol. It's clear that we must make a new plan and try again. We can limit the size of the Comrade Kirov's security detail. Kanaka GES. The Kanaka Hydroelectric Station will help electrify Armenia. Located on the Hrazdan River. It is called Kankadar because of the eponymous village northeast of Yerevan. Nice. Cool. Ah, one infrastructure, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, we have some infrastructure, which is nice and all, but we got to keep building ourselves on up here. Oh, this looks pretty good. And I don't want to put it close to the front because we will be losing some la some land around here, probably. Chapayev, Lenin, Lenfilms, new biopic, Waterfilm. 
Chapayev were premiered today in Leningrad. The movie is an adaptation of Commissar Dmitry Firmanov's memoirs in which Civil War hero Vasily Ivanovich Chapayev fights with his soldiers against the White Army. It stars Boris Babochkin as Babochev Chapayev himself, Boris Blinov as Commissar Firmanov, Yar Varvara Mysnikova as Anka the Machine Gunner, and Leonid Kmit as Petka. The film has proven to be a huge success. All countries watching Chapayev. Chapayev. Yes. Good. Um, why not? Good recon. We can use that. 15, 15, 14. The Commonwealth of the Philippines. Congratulations to the Philippines. So it was November 11th, uh, 34. Cool. And now we're done with all the infrastructure, which is great. Because we are just beelining through the second five-year plan, which is awesome, 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 awesome. Because I want to get the extra construction speed, factory up, a dock it up for like a year and a half, or a year and two-thirds of a year. Um, it takes so long, though. If we're going to get steel, we'll get more steel. So, the Metallurgiski Kombinat Krivorozdat. The metallurgical plant, Kerverolstal, named after V.I. Lenin, will be Vladimir Lenin, will be another steel mill in Ukraine. Located in Kriv, uh, Krivoy K Rog, the plant will be the main steel mill in the Western USSR. Cool. My apologies for mispronunciations. I obviously do not speak a lot of Russian. The second attempt on Kamen Kirov's life. After our failed assassination of Sega Kirov, we have had to go back to the drawing board. As clearly is not as easy as we thought. With the power of the NKVD, we've managed to reduce Comrade Kirov's bodyguards to a team of four. We will also instruct NKVD guards in the Smolny not to, to not obstruct Nikolaev's mission. This should make it easier for Nikolaev to commit the murder. It'll work this time. Hey, we the promise. It'll work. It'll work. Comrades, it'll work. Ah, the death of Kirov. Today in the afternoon, a hired gun, Leonid Nikolaev, entered the Smolny and shot Sergei Kirov in the back of the neck in the hallway. Because of our intervention, he was allowed to conduct the operation without any difficulty. We have now engineered a crime. All that remains is to engineer motive, and Comrade Stalin has, can have his purge. The NKVD officers who failed in their duty today must also be quickly be dealt with, and quietly. However, to keep any appearances, we must give Comrade Kirov a safe funeral. Comrade Stalin shall be one of the pa uh, pal bearers. Uh, Ke Sergei Kirov will no longer be available as a minister. Oh, go figure. A false investigation shall take place to create a pretext for a purge. Oh, is it down here? No? No? Okay, well, goodbye. The Wild Wild Crisis. Ah, Ethiopia. She the bureaucracy probably would be a good thing to do as well. Uh, I'll, I'll do it anyway. We get some political power. The 17th Party Congress has also approved measures calling for a slight downscaling and streamlining of bureaucratic offices. Slight, slight, slight. Not very much. Very, very slight. Uh, Jolly Fellows, a new movie starring Leonid Utsyoyov and Lubov Orolova, premiered today in the USSR. Jolly Fellows tells the story of a shepherd named Kostya, uh, whose greatest passion is playing with his flute. By mistake, he is invited to a party held and attended by several nap men and women. How do we throw him out for, for being a simple shepherd? He leaves for the city to pursue fame. He joins a band which then wins fame in a Moscow concert hall. Orlova plays Anyuta, the maid of Yelena, a rich woman whose Kostya is at love with at first. However, Anyuta also loves Kostya. At the end, Anyuta joins a band as a singer and the two fall in love. The film is quite quickly becoming incredibly popular. A fun musical for all. And after this one, uh, yeah, we're going to definitely do streamline bureaucracy. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Ooh. The investigation into Comrade Kirov's assassination. Now that a government has murdered Sergei Kirov, the NKVD is tasked with conducting a false investigation to provide an excuse for the elimination of every element that Comrade Stalin sees as a potential, a possible threat. In this vein, our assassin, Leonid Nikolaev, has just been executed after being forced to falsely confess to being part of a fascist plot. His family members and a few of his personal friends have been killed or sent to labor camps, and his son has been sent to an orphanage. Ah, appropriate. Going further. Uh, Commissar Borisov, an NKVD officer who is to be in charge of the Kirov security, has been killed, and his wife has been sent to an insane asylum. 104 prisoners unrelated to the incident were accused of fascism and executed. Several Leningrad NKVD officers have also been convicted of negligence, and his punishment has been sent to guard the labor camps. Party meetings have also been no less vicious. The party secretary of the Moscow district even went so far as to claim that, that Comrade Stalin personally inter interrogated Nikolaev. All committees can agree, however, that the opposition is at fault for the death of Kirov. Increased calls for a purge of the party suggest that the plan has worked and that we will soon be free to carry out this purge. Party members are blaming the opposition leadership for being morally responsible for the murder simply because they oppose or do not reach the party line. Major opposition members like Zinoviev and Kamenev have been arrested. Nobody has even thought to mention the fascist plot that NKVD extracted out of Nikolaev. The central committee must be pitless. Ah, ooh, the great purge. 
Look at this. Using the NKVD assassination of Sergei Kirov, we have a pretext to conduct a massive purge of political and social sphere. Opposition politicians and innocent people will be accused of conspiracies, commit various forms of treason, and will be executed. Karmas still claims that threats within and outside of the party are plotting against him, and must be forced to confess to their false crimes. Even loyal followers of Stalin must be eliminated to avoid overenthusiasm. Some members of the emigre groups will also be brought to the USSR and executed. Outside of the political sphere, the military also must be purged for those who may or may not think outside of the party lines. Furthermore, the anti-intellectual campaigns will be intensified. Writers, actors, directors can pose a propaganda threat to power. Furthermore, national groups must be eliminated to preserve the territorial integrity of the USSR. Several party members have been issued a revolver so they can address spies and saboteurs. We should take them away before we begin mass arrests and protect NKVD agents. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And Chris, this one's next. The Metallurgical Combine... Azovstal will be a new steel mill established in Mariupol. Mariupol. It'll be the first 250-ton open hearth furnace in the USSR. Yes, progress, my friends, progress. And happy 1935, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful year. Hey, look, Adolf. And then uh, five versus five. Uh, the Metallurgical Combinat Novotulsky. Located in the Tola region near Moscow, the metallurgical plant Novotulsky will improve the RSFSR's output of steel. It will also provide employment to some of the starving masses in Tola and, of course, Moscow. Well, yeah, starving, yeah, things happen. Uh, since we're here, go and stop training for now. There we go. These, these guys, not very good, but that's alright. And these guys, well, not so great. And you guys are trapped there, which is god-awful, but whatever. Things happen. Oh! Hey, you got more political power. Awesome, 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 awesome. We're gonna improve working conditions, but now nah, we're okay for now. Promises of peace. Yeah, we're really just beelining through this, which is awesome. I wonder, I did wonder when the purges were gonna begin, so. Oh, look at this. The fourth five year plan. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> and we have the third five year plan, too. Oh. The USA demands repayment of Tsar's debts. That's not historical, is it? No, it's not. After re recognizing our country, the U.S. has demanded the full repayment of the loans that Tsar took during the Empire's final years. Of course, we don't need to pay them, and the U.S. is not in a position to force us to pay them either. No? You know what? We'll pay them. You know what? We might need them later on. But that doesn't make any sense. Like, I even looked up historically when I played this historical USA, that they, I'm pretty sure they talked about leaving the debts, you know, for a later time. Like, not the 30s. So, hmm. But, Metallurgische Kombinat Noble Lepetsk. Lepetsk, RSFRSR, will be home to the metallurgical plant Novo Lepetsk, a steel mill meant to have produced 350,000 tons of cast iron per year. It will continue the proud tradition of Lepetsk ironworking, begun on the initiative of Peter the Great. Happy 35, everybody. Let's see. Can we get some more research speed? No, we cannot. We can get some radar, but we might want to wait on that first. Uh, yeah, get more base. We like the base. Um, if we had to improve it, or get anything here, industrial concern, industrial... Ooh, that is not bad. We definitely want that for the manufacturer. Take manufacturer. There's nothing here unique. Oh, it sucks. Medium tanks would be nice, though. Well, it looks like we're forced to go a certain way. That really sucks. Uh, I would love to go to early mobilization, but we need to be war, have more war sport. More than 15%, at the very least. Uh, if that's the case, construction speed, yes, please. It's not very much, but we'll take it. Military police, 35. Anything for 35? No. No, not quite yet. 36 is for the tanks and heavy tanks as well. 39 for better planes. But, oh, planes. I almost forgot about planes, which we're definitely going to need when we go to war, so. And Metallurgiski Kombinat Zaporozdat. 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 I apologize, I cannot read this correctly. Zaporozia will be home to the metallurgical plant Zaporozdal, a mill designed by the State Institute for the Design of Metallurgical Plants. We wanted to become one of the largest in Europe, but we did not know if this is possible with the current technology. So after this, we're going to really focus on a lot of this stuff over here, and maybe focus a little more on the Red Army, because we could really probably use it. Oh, we're introduced conscription. I wonder what they're going to do with that. Hmm. Military production. You don't get a lot here. You, we, I mean, there's quite a few focuses, but still. This whole three-year, five-year plan thing doesn't really make me feel really great about it. But, industrial manufacturer, it does make me feel really good. Nice. Not bad. Under factories, it's a slow process, but we're getting there. We need way more artillery, though. Holy crap. Yeah, we're not like, it's not like we're making any millies, so... 14%? No, that sucks. Ethnic nationalism, dissatisfaction. Yeah, that sucks a lot. So after this one, we will get the second five-year plan. So more construction features. Build, 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 build. That's my main goal for this episode right now. Main, main episode goal. So after this one, we can do that one immediately, but let's wait. 
Um, I really don't remember the friendships of people versus continue this one. Cornizazia, our policy of indigenization must continue to ensure cultural prosperity. I forgot to do this one too. Yeah, I'll do this one next. Yeah. Slight downscaling, streaming of bureaucratic offices. That's definitely what we're going to do next, so. <sighs> China is just one god awful mess. Deal with the Great Depression. Or pick a side. For the fatherland. Yeah. If you're a military of the Chinese army, use firepower. Nah. Hmm. <laughs> oh, we're going to pay the debts. Nice. Filthy capitalists always demanding money. Here, do that one. There you go. Dola. Yeah. 60%. In a run of percent. Yeah, that's better. Nice. Now, let's remind the bureaucracy. And then reorganize districts. Uh, I kind of want to do this one. Just because you can go bo both both ways here. Hmm. Branches of the people. The Kornizatsia did not go far enough to assure the people that Russia is not really in total control. A concentrated, a concentrated propaganda effort can help with this. Let me for the state. Nice. More fuel gain for later because we will probably need it. Uh, reorganize districts. At the 17th Congress, the party decided to reshuffle party organization at the rayon or county level. Hey, not bad. I think you just keep an eye on this stuff now because we only have 103 civvy factories. Collective the spirit. So either way I choose, I'm probably going to choose wrong. Um, we'll see. Nice. Defense in depth. Uh, probably deep battle is the way we're going to go. I like deep battle. I prefer deep battle, usually. We get less supply consumption, too. Damage enemy garrisons. Mass mobilization. We get way better recovery rate. I mean, deep battle is definitely the way to go. We get 5% more. That's so strong. 5% more recruitable population. 15% more reinforce rate. Uh, what's the reinforce rate on this side? 5%. And a way better supply consumption. Yeah, you get 10% over there. Over here, though, you get 15. 15. You get way better recovery. Actually, you get 20. You get 20 reinforce rate. Jesus Christ. I wish you can take both of them. Um, what am I looking at? I'm looking for one of these. Oh, yeah, you get 10 more organization. Do you get any organization on this side at all for infantry? You do get 10% breakthrough and 5 more organization, which is not great. That's not bad. We're going to deep battle. Oh, man. We're going to so many men. Friendships. Continue it. Yeah, I think we'll go the... Oh, I want to do the continue. All People's Union's concert. A grand concert in Moscow celebrating all the peoples of the USSR is just what we need to make them feel better about the regime. Redirect nationalism, it's perfectly fine. If you unite an ethnic group under the USSR, of course. Ah, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to leave this to you guys. Was this historical? Do we do, do, we do friendships with peoples? Or do we continue the K-word here? I cannot remember. So in the meantime, we're going to do collective spirit. It's not enough to collectivize people on a physical level. We must collectivize them on a spiritual level as well. Their individuality must be stamped out, and any actions against their collectives must be shamed. So it sounds like we should go this way. Or we should go with... Well, one of these two. I can't tell. Socialist idealism... Reinvigorate the class war. Uh, huh. Anti-intellectualism. Well. Downscale trade unions. The trade unions themselves will be downscaled, and their operations will be more subordinate to the party control. Yeah, I'll do downscale trade unions next. Second Italian Ethiopian War, actually. Can we get involved here? Yes, we can. Oh, yes, please. It's all very mountainous, so I'll take you. Finally. Finally, some conflict. Some quality conflict here. Um, assistance to case speed, division defense. Excuse you. Do you have an airport here? You do. We can only send 20 planes, though. God dang it. Uh, 20 planes is not very much. Do we have any just 20 fighters? Yeah, we do. My apologies for the clicking. Nice. Let's see what we can do. Well, they do take a while to get down there, though. Um, medium bombers. Nice.
After that, I do want to finally do something over here as well, the Red Army. Our enemies are always plotting to destroy the USSR and the social state we've built up. The defense of our motherland is paramount. Alright, so, over here. Wow, you already lost quite a bit. Um, I do want to defend down here, but I feel like up here is probably good to defend it as well. Either side, really. There you go. Your refining is nice. We did get better engineers. I'm not sure we put them on our mountaineers yet, but we'll get some more army XP as well, which would be nice. Plain stuff. Uh, cast auction. I love cast. Illusion. Uh, I'll just grab the, that stuff. Carry fires eventually, too. Withdraws from Haiti. Alright, not bad for them. So on these mountaineers. We actually have 24 combo. That's not bad. We're going to replace them and make them 20 combo with, but for now, I think we're doing okay. Yeah, let them attack us. Can you actually win there? Yeah, you might actually be able to win there, huh? The Red Army. And then we're going to do the Tao Soviet Pact. We cannot forget that the first Western government to recognize the USSR was Mussolini's Italy. Therefore, we must conclude a pact of friendship that includes a trade deal so we can get Italian capital on our lands. Ah, good. Alright, so keep making a few more cities, and then we're going to start moving our production over to Millie's. At least one line of Millie's. Oh, that sucks, bro. Bro, that sucks. You don't like economies? What's wrong with you? 10 army XP is nice. Go on, we have engineers on these guys already. Um, Cavalry? Just in case, maybe? Hope you're learning a lot. Oh, get a field marshal too, because we can. So, I mean, you have planning speed. You got a lot of stuff here. Doesn't mean it's really good, though. You have good off. Logistics. That's good. I'll go throw a planner too. You know how to plan parties. That sucks, bro. Yeah, they're still coming up here pretty quickly. Um, did they not send anyone here? Oh, go figure. It's all right with us. And then we'll continue developing deep battle doctrine. Mikhail Tukhachevsky's deep battle doctrine involves a simultaneous use of aircraft, industry, and armor. Uh, infantry and armor, not industry, but infantry and armor, to overwhelm enemy defenses. It is this that allows us to spread the revolution. Nice. 35, it's almost 36, so... Uh, there you go. Are you learning anything? No? God dang it, dude. Oh, look at that. Arm XP. Alright, so I actually want to reduce this. Make it, well, you know what? Screw it. Reset. Uh, how do we duplicate this? There you go. Um, should be okay to do it like this. And then make him 40 combo with, because uh, it's going to be really painful to do. 40. Is anything else here? No, we're fine. Oh, we barely have enough. Not that bad. I doubt we can convert them over, can we? Yeah. Can we at least convert one, maybe? No, we cannot. Oh, how great is that? That is just phenomenal. Great. And uh, yeah, we'll continue to deep, develop deep battle. And we'll keep going down. So we're going to wait for the third five-year plan. I don't exactly remember when the third five-year plan fired, but... Or, I was really, you know, done, but whatever. Uh, Ethiopia, you might want to cover your borders. And I think we've lost now. <sighs> Death of Georgia V, that sucks. Bro, why are you attacking? Italy sends the Italian Soviet Pact. The Kingdom of Italy sent the Pact of Friendship, Neutrality, and Non-Aggression between Italy and the Soviet Union. Therefore, our trade relations have improved, and we've opened the door for future military cooperation. We'll build our, on our historical friendship. And then join the League of Nations. The People's uh, Commissariat for Foreign Affairs is currently concerned with defending the USSR from enemy threats. Because Comrade Stalin is personally uninterested in diplomacy right now, uh, Narco Mindel has been free to act mostly independently. Thus, we have been pursuing a policy of uh, collective security, and joining the League of Nations is an important step in this direction. Nice. Good stuff. Mm. It is 36, so. Uh, keep an eye on what we're producing here. Ah, uh, screw you again. Uh, we'll do it one more time. Actually, can we go to... Oh, we can go to early mobilization. That's nice. That's good. Good stuff. This is very dangerous right here. Wait, they do not want to attack? What is wrong with you? Go there. Popular front wins Spanish elections for now. They are holding out, which is pretty nice. Get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. And we have gotten in there. Nice. Not bad. 
I would like to attack. We could come back up there and attack here, maybe. We'll see. Join the League of Nations, my friends. The Shoah Restoration. And what else can we do? Equipment manufacturers. Anything about these? Um, anything that gives us more organization, really, is probably what we want to do. Ooh, get more max. That's a lot of max entrenchment. That's really nice. And more organization and entrenchment speed. Zukov. Ooh. I like that, too. But, early mobilization. And then we'll go with RD Transport Office. Military and industrial transport should come under the direct control of the party. Nice. Alright, so things have definitely slowed down here. Can we actually help them win, maybe? That'd be kind of cool. You have 6 army XP. Can you actually win there? Yeah, you might be able to win, maybe. That would be pretty cool if we could. Party transport office. Almost still activity, huh? Alright, that's not great, but not bad. Uh, 42 day focuses. You gotta love them. Remilitarize. Happy! 36, everybody. Happy April. Happy, happy April. Um, I don't know which one's... Joint statement with Italy. Sign non negotiation pact. Approve relations with Hungary. Yeah. Devil's Front. Yeah, probably collective security. The threat of fascism is large and looms over Europe like a specter. If we are to survive, we must work with the moderate capitalist powers. Unfortunately, but it is what it is. Oh, we're well, going to have the Desert Fox. Yes, yes, yes. Better guns. Yes, yes, yes. Better planes. Yes, 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 yes. Carrier okay, planes one. It's fine. Throw them on there for now. We'll see if we actually use them. You know what would be really cool? We went right there. Attack there and take Asab. And actually destroy some Italian divisions. Oh, hold on, hold on. They're attacking us. Defense is, uh, is the highest priority right now first. It's fine. Just absorb all those attacks. Nice. Good. Yeah, they're definitely struggling here. They still have no planes. Why? Italy, why are you so incompetent? Nice. I started with that. Continue third period. Popular fronts? Way to be fa Oh. Okay. Popular fronts. So, communist parties that work with other socialists and radicals against fascism. Third p p period. Continue strategy of non cooperation with social democratic parties. The only thing more dangerous than capitalist kind of revolutionary is a rival socialist. Some of Germany. We can't do that one, obviously. Improve Franco Soviet uh, r relations. That's probably what I'm going to do next. Just in case we'll get some anti tank and stuff like that. If we were to successfully secure our territory in Europe, we then a friendship with France must be a top priority. Yeah, pretty much. Mutual assistance. It's not bad. I'm not sure that's really historical yet, but we'll see. Can you guys go in now? Yeah, they're still kind of attacking us, though. Hold, 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 hold. Because they're, they're spilling through here still, so. Allow Cossacks to serve. For years, the government has been pressured by uh, numerous former Cossacks who wish to serve in the Red Army. They would be bringing much new experience for armed forces. Okay, sure, why not? Also, I don't remember this one, too. Now I'm going to back with the Czechs, denounce imperialism. I thought that sounds like more the way to go. Which way should we go with this stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Which one is more historical? Please let me know, because I don't know. But, uh, successful some of the French. Only to the common threats would be prudent for the French nation and the U.S. to defend against other nations of enemy, against enemy invasion. Yeah, that would be smart. He falls ill? Well, why'd you fall ill? Do we get rid of you? You should easily be able to win here. And to God a sob. Oh, come on, man. Seriously, bro. Uh, then we'll do vertical management. Streamline bureaucracy. Oh, wait, what? Streamline bureaucracy. Ooh. Oh! Oh, man, we should have done this one earlier. Uh, we should reorganize industrial and political management style to have a more vertical and hierarchical organization. Ooh, I didn't realize that was going to take... Ooh. Spanish the war, nice. Thirty-four days. Um, yeah, we're not gonna be able to get that one done. Which means I made a mistake, so we'll probably do this one off screen. I might do some fucky stuff to make sure we get this one actually. So we'll do this one off screen. And I'll also read party fuel office. Matters relating to the fuel usage by industrial and military equipment should be controlled by a special party commission. But uh, thank you, Soviet 
relations improve. The French government has decided that it would be prudent to improve relations with us, seeing as we might have common enemies. We are now further on our way to establishing a mutual guarantee of independence with the French Republic. Very good. But if you enjoyed our first uh, episode in this campaign, playing as Daddy Papa Joseph Stalin using mass seduction. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we'll probably get involved in the Spanish Civil War and see if we can survive against potential other enemies. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.